of a trend. Make the trend your friend. Simple? Keep it simple. What is today's trend? So you want to focus on that. Each one of you, like I said earlier, bring in talents. But do you know how to adapt your talents and your skills with what is trendy today? So what's the trend today? So that's the first thing you want to look out for. Now, this is something that's particular to this particular group because your sales and marketing. You know, when I'm, I'm from sales and marketing background, had an advertising background, used to work with JWT, I used to work with Procter & Gamble, TD still do, I'm a consultant for these companies, so I'm pretty much on that side as well. These are three things I would like to recommend. Sales and marketing, three things you want to remember is, one of the first things is the multicultural changing landscape of Canada and the GTA in particular. A lot of people from Asia and the Philippines and Southeast come in here. Many brands, many companies are looking for people with those kind of talents. If you're from those countries, you could act as a bridge. You bring your skills and talents, but you can help Canadian marketers, Canadian brands, reach out to multicultural audiences. Easy? Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is, there is an over-dependence or an emphasis on social media. Do you agree? Each one of the companies that you want to work for already has a LinkedIn page, a YouTube page, a Facebook page on their website, be it Nestle or IBM or Procter & Gamble. Question is, do you? Are you also social, uh, socially at par with them? If you are, if not, get on LinkedIn, get on Twitter, and then start following these companies that you want to work for. Okay? Catch the latest trends. You will always catch what they are doing, what the latest acquisition. Most of the time, it could be a tweet. You can follow them. You can even subscribe to their apps. And the third online resource is a magazine called Marketing. Marketing magazine. And the website is marketing.ca. And you could all go to marketing.ca. And that's the best way to stay trendy. Sales and marketing, stay trendy with what Canadian brands are doing through marketing.ca. Already we're getting into great resources and ideas. Thank you very much. So let's take one. Um, Patricia, did you have something you wanted to add? I was just going to add, in terms of labor market trends, uh, another trend, and you're probably well aware of this, is the you know, born after 1980 Gen Y millennial workforce trend. And in Canada, this comes up as a topic over and over again with large companies hiring. And that is the challenges of engaging the 20-something-year-old employee. And they are finding it really challenging. Um, some of the work we do around brand uh, is also around employee brand engagement. So we've encountered this. And I think that you would present a wonderful um, alternative to Gen Y millennial talent because I think that many, many hiring companies um, find the labor market, if you will, um, challenging right now in Canada because of um, different attitudes. It's not good or bad, but um, there are some challenges, I think. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, to add to resources as being mentioned, there are two ma uh, major marketing associations in Canada which offer pretty good networking opportunities. A lot of uh, the Fortune 500 companies in Canada belong to them. They're not specifically using it to recruit, but for professional development and training, and that is the Canadian Marketing Association, the CMA, and the American Marketing Association Toronto chapter. Uh, the CMA is large national, the AMA has local chapters, um, the American Marketing Association, I used to be on the board of six years ago, but the Toronto chapter uh, used to have monthly breakfast networking events, it was not expensive to join. A lot of recruiting firms would come out, and the topics would be marketing and sales trends in Canada. Maybe of interest to you. The CMA, larger, more expensive, really. Their conferences are um, wonderful. But they are changing it up to five themes that are affecting marketing uh, uh, professionals in Canada. So just two other thoughts in terms of networking. The AMA is probably the most accessible, believe it or not, and thinking about um, that trend of Gen Y millennial and also learning about that because I think that is almost one of your comparative uh, labor market um, segments. And I'll just add one quick thing about the networking. So there are so many networking opportunities in the city. Uh, going to conferences is fantastic, but often conferences can be somewhat costly. So going to um, meetings of associations, sometimes you can get someone in this uh, association to bring you 
at no cost, or it's often very reasonable. And that is a fantastic way to get out and meet people that are working in the areas you want to be in. We're going to take a quick answer from Hyacinth, and then we're going to go to Julie, and then we'll come back because I think Patty wants to add something as well. Just uh, say something quickly. So as you're looking for your perfect job or that job, just figure out the title that you want. I know you have the titles in your head from the countries you're coming from, but never shy away from some of the jobs that you may see posted because some organizations, especially the small to, um, small to medium enterprises, may have the title of a marketing manager. But as you scour through that job description, there are some elements of sales. So I would uh, just recommend that you take a look closely at every job posting that you think, you know what, I'm a salesperson, even says marketing. Take a look at it because buried into that job description, you realize that this company is really looking for a salesperson. And you do have that transferable skills that you can add. So never shy away. So my tip to you is to take a look at all postings. So that was through an alumni board, alumni board an association, yeah. those volunteer opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps I can share, Wendy, because I mean, I'm going through the process now where, like Gerard, I also graduated last year. And so I am looking at, I've always been in the sales and the customer uh, facing roles. And, and so looking at that next role, I recognize that, like you, I, I really needed to do a better job at it. Earlier on, I tended to put my head down, I worked, I went at it. And really, truly, it is so very important to keep those lines open. And you talked, Bob, about how few students use the resource, right? Um, so what I've learned, so, so when I started thinking about a mentor, and so maybe I can share about that, I, I thought about what would I like from that mentor, and I, and I matched it to where do I want to go. So I thought of, you know, um, what have they done in their world, you know, um, what's their personality. I wanted some transparency, some honesty. So I looked at all those things. The other thing I recognized is it's okay to have more than one, right? So I don't just have one. So I started with one person and thought, you know, I'm female and it'd be really nice to have a female professional mentor. And so I went searching for that as well. But in, in terms of finding those um, people, I just leverage the people that I know and who know me. Um, you know, and in my case, it's in the professional world. And I said, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. This is where I want to go. And so, um, you know, I was um, linked into them that way. I recognize now that I have to do a, an ongoing, you know, job with them. Like I have to do the follow up and I'm better at that now. So remember, it's not just about finding someone and talking. They bring something to the table, but so do you. You know, they're, it's their time that you're taking. And you have to bring something to the table to them. So just quick notes around, here's where I'm at. You shared this. I've gone away. I've done it. This is the outcome. This is where I'm going next. I found now it's really such a, a better um, experience for me. And so I just thought I could share that because I'm just really going through that right now. Right. So did you ask that person, will you be my mentor? Like, how do you have the conversation where mm -hmm. you say, I, you know, I want you to be my mentor? Right. Two ways. Um, in one case, I went out to my manager, that's where it started, and I said, I need a good mentor, and this is what I'm looking for in a mentor. And so he took that away and, and found a couple of folks and said, okay, what do you think? And I chose. In another case, um, I just met her and, and thought, you know, wow, like she's pretty, pretty um, amazing. And, and I asked, you know, would you uh, consider being my mentor? And, and she booked the time with me, and so I went in, and, and just the initial was just around getting to know me and what I was looking for and what I was asking. But it can happen both ways. I mean, to kind of add to that, yes. I mean, for me, um, the opportunity that came up, we were kind of friends, but in the end, as, as time progressed, I actually asked him, hey, I want you to be my mentor. Like, you've done so well professionally, personally, it's like I want to learn from you. I take me, I take me under your wing, and, and let's fly, right? And and I say, yep, let's 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 do it. I mean, we meet. Uh, he's pretty, pretty, I mean, we meet on a regular basis, share ideas about business opportunities. So it's really key. Just ask. Don't be shy. And and, and you know, and that's where I am. It's, it's pretty neat. So. And, and I think you'd just be surprised. Sorry, how many people are willing to do it? I myself mentor. I mean, I always looked at these folks and I thought, oh, but you're busy, they're so busy. Don't be afraid, you know, just ask. Yeah. 
so many people want to share and give back and develop. I love developing people. So just ask. Yeah. And um, I actually just want to add, because hey, man, you came on this panel because of one of your uh, mentors. Maybe you can share a little bit about your your story, and we're thrilled that... Yeah, definitely, and that's a good point. I was actually wanting to talk about that. So I'm in this panel right now. This was about... Uh, four years ago, right when I completed my MBA. I came to Canada for my MBA. This was a new country. I've never had anyone here that I knew in this country. New country, came here for my MBA, quit all my job. I came over here, completed my job, and exactly like Wendy, what Wendy said, I thought I will be getting my uh, dream job right after graduation, I did not get it. So I was pissed off. <laughs> so it was about a month. It took about a couple of months um, but uh, to get my first job. But during that two months, it was hard. It was really hard. Um, I'm not a coffee drinker, okay? But during that time, I would go to, I would sit in, sit in Starbucks and have at least three cups of coffee, tall, tall coffee every day. And uh, this is how I met this person um, who sort of became my mentor as well. But it just started as, um, as, a, as, a, as a typical coffee meeting with her, and that's how it all started. And she gave me, uh, she gave me three other people that she knew of, and then I met up with them as well, and that's uh, that's how I got to. You know what? I, that's how I got my uh, my first job in, in Canada. I, I was working uh, for Scotia Bank, and after that, I got my loyalty one job, and now I'm at Hold Renfrew. I'm really so um, glad that I got to meet with her first. And had she not, had I not met her, I would not be where I am right now. I'm not be speaking um, with you guys right now. So what is really important is that. You, as, um, as Sherry just mentioned, you should not be afraid. Just try asking. Everybody wants to help other people. Everyone wants to share their experiences for sure. You might be thinking that they're very busy. You don't want to bother them. But everyone has their time, and they will be able to help you if you ask them. I'm sorry. Again, wouldn't so take a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll go to Bob. Because uh, that is something, uh, you know, the, the whole subject around mentoring, something which is close to my heart. So the way it happens usually, even before you go and approach somebody and ask him or her to be your mentor, you have to connect. You have to build a rapport. And that's how networking starts. That how you, that's how you find your prospective employer. Uh, so connecting with somebody on a personal level is all about letting the other person speak about himself. And look at all of us. We are so excited talking about ourselves. You have to give them the opportunity to talk about themselves rather than just approaching somebody saying, hey, I've been here in Canada for two years. I'm XYZ looking for a job in this industry. He would be least bothered because he gets those kinds of you know, invitations to connect and emails on LinkedIn and all over the places on a daily basis. You have to stand out and give the person his due credit.